Hi guys, today we're going to look at how we can make objects in Unity collide and interact with each other. As always, if you prefer written instructions, you can find a link to the text version in the description. Right, let's get started by creating a new 3D project in Unity Hub. We'll add a plane for our floor by clicking the plus button and selecting 3D object, plane. We'll set the scale of the plane to 100 on the x-axis and 100 on the z-axis. Next we'll create a material to change the colour of the floor. To do this we'll click on the plus button on the project panel and select material. We'll name this material floor. We'll click on this box next to albedo and choose a green colour. We can now drag the material onto the plane to assign it. We're now going to import some free assets to use in our scene. We'll head over to the Asset Store by clicking Window, Asset Store. We'll then search for Low Polygon Soccer Ball. We'll download and import this asset. Then we'll search for PBR Cardboard Box. We'll download and import this asset. Now we've got all the assets we need, we'll return to the scene view. In the project panel, we'll navigate to Assets, Soccer Ball, Prefabs, and we'll drag the soccer ball into the scene. We'll set the position to 0 on the x-axis, 0.11 on the y-axis and 0 on the z-axis. Next we'll add an obstacle for our soccer ball to collide with. In the project panel we'll navigate to Assets, Crow Art PBR Cardboard Box, Prefabs and we'll drag this box into the scene. We'll set the position to 0 on the x-axis, 0.3 on the y-axis and 1.5 on the z-axis. Next, we'll reposition the camera to get a better view of our scene. We'll select the camera in the hierarchy and set the position to 1.2 on the Y axis and minus 2 on the Z axis. And we'll set the rotation to 5 on the X axis. Let's generate the lighting to improve the appearance of the scene. To do this, we'll select Window, Rendering, Lighting Settings, and then we'll tick the Auto Generate checkbox. Now we're going to look at how we can move the ball by applying a force to it. For us to be able to do this, we need to select the ball in the hierarchy, click Add Component, and search for the Rigid Body Component. This will add the ball to Unity's physics system. Next, we'll write a script to apply a force when we press the arrow keys. To do this, we'll click on Add Component, search for the script component, and add a new script called Ball Movement. We'll double click the script in the project panel to open it in Visual Studio. The first thing we'll do is add a public variable to hold the size of the force we want to apply. Then we'll add a private vector3 variable which we'll use to keep track of the direction we want the ball to travel. In order to apply a force, we'll need to access the rigid body component. We'll add another private variable for this. In the start method, we can then get the rigid body component and assign it to this variable. In our update method, we'll get the input on the horizontal axis and assign it to a variable. This will give us a value ranging from minus 1 to 1, depending on whether the player is pressing the left or right keys. We'll do the same for the vertical axis. We'll then use these values to create a direction we want the force to be applied in, with the horizontal input for the direction on the x-axis and the vertical input for the direction on the z-axis. Direction vectors should have a magnitude of 1, so we need to normalise the vector to ensure this is the case. The next thing we need to do is apply the force to the ball. We'll do this in the fixed update method, which is a method specifically for physics calculations. 
we'll multiply the force size by the force direction to calculate the force. Then we'll add the force to the rigid body. We'll now save the script and switch back to Unity. We'll select the ball in the hierarchy and set the force size to 8 in the inspector panel. Let's press the play button to test this out. If we press the arrow keys, the ball will roll along the plane and will collide with the box. Let's press play again to stop the game. Unity knows how to handle collisions between our objects because they all have collider components. The ball has a sphere collider component, which allows you to define the centre and the size of the collision sphere. The cardboard box has a box collider component, which allows you to define the centre and the size of the collision box. The plane has a mesh collider component, which allows you to select a mesh to be used to detect collisions. Let's select the cardboard box in the hierarchy and turn off the box collider. We'll press play again to see what happens. The ball will still roll along the plane, but it will pass straight through the box as there is no collider to collide with. Let's press play again to stop the game and we'll turn the collider back on. At the moment, the cardboard box is acting as a solid immovable wall for our ball to collide with. To make the box move when it is collided with, we'll add a rigid body component. Let's start the game again. The box now moves slightly when the ball collides with it. It only moves a small amount because the ball and the box are configured to have the same mass. Let's stop the game so we can change this. In the rigid body component for the cardboard box, we'll reduce the mass to 0.01. Let's press play to see how this affects the collisions. When the ball collides with the box now, the movement is much greater due to the box being much lighter. We'll stop the game again so we can build a tower of boxes to collide with. We'll create a copy of the box by right-clicking on it in the hierarchy and selecting Duplicate. We'll change the X position of the new cube to minus 0.65. Next, we'll now hold down the Control key and select both boxes in the hierarchy. We'll then right-click and select Duplicate to create two new boxes. We'll set the Y position of these to 0.91. We'll duplicate the boxes again and we'll set the Y position to 1.52. We'll duplicate one more time and we'll set the Y position to 2.13. Let's press play to test this out. Now when the ball collides with the boxes, the tower collapses and the boxes fall as you would expect. OK, that covers everything for this tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys.